Ladies and gentlemen, aloha. My name is Jonathan Billings. I am a vice president at Touchstone Properties and owner president of Vertical Hawaii Reserve Studies. Today, we will speak about uh, association reserve studies and uh, uh, building collapse uh, and uh, how you can utilize a reserve study to minimize the chance of a building collapse or any life safety event uh, for that matter. Uh, First and foremost, uh, we are all absolutely you know, shocked uh, at what happened with the uh, condominium in Florida, uh, absolute tragedy. Uh, obviously th this was an eye-opening experience uh, for many of us. And as a reserve specialist, I thought, well, what could have been done or what could be done uh, for that building or for any building here uh, in Hawaii or anywhere for that matter? Uh, with your reserve study that could have helped minimize that chance uh, or the result that ended up happening. Um, it, it's an absolute tragedy, uh, but we can obviously take this as a learning experience as well uh, when we look at our association funding and our association reserve studies uh, when we perform those. Uh, as everyone is well aware in the state of Hawaii, uh, reserve studies are required to be done on an annual basis. Generally speaking, it is a simple update. But in light of what just occurred, uh, associations may want to consider uh, doing a more in-depth reserve study, or when I say more in-depth reserve study, I, I mean a level one reserve study, uh, which is a more comprehensive reserve study that includes a site visit to help identify uh, some items that may be considered uh, life-threatening uh, events. Uh, let me be clear uh, and completely upfront and provide this disclosure to our viewers today. I am not an engineer. Um, I am not qualified uh, essentially to give an, an engineering analysis or professional opinions uh, out of fields that are not within my expertise. Uh, and that being said, I also wanna disclose that a reserve study is not an engineering report. Uh, a reserve study is not uh, an intrusive forensic, forensic inspection. It's not a code compliance inspection. It's not an engineering analysis, hazardous materials investigation, termite inspection, uh, or any of that. It's not a quality or audit inspection of the project. A reserve study essentially is a financial planning tool that associations utilize in order to plan and fund projects accordingly uh, that we know associations will have to undertake uh, at some point uh, in the future. Uh, that being said, considering a reserve study is not an engineering, engineering analysis, how can a reserve study help plan uh, in hopes to minimize the chance of a building collapse or minimize the chance of any life safety, uh, life-threatening event, such as, if you guys recall, the uh, individuals that fell uh, from a, a Lanai, excuse me, a corridor walkway at the Ala Moana Shopping Center a number of years ago. So, a reserve study will essentially will look at your, your lanai railing and your walk rails. Uh, a reserve study, uh, when you are doing a site inspection, will look at uh, different areas of your, uh, your uh, complex, such as possible trip hazards uh, or possible electrical malfunctions that may result in an elect electrical arc flash. Uh, so a reserve study, as a reserve, reserve specialist, I will not go and give an opinion that you have to be uh, concerned that this is going to occur in the very near future, because I'm not qualified to say that. However, uh, it is important to understand that a reserve study can be utilized to help identify uh, potential threats to an association. So how can you use your reserve study to, to accomplish that? The key takeaway from this episode that I want everyone to really think about is that a reserve study can be utilized to allocate funds to engage qualified third-party professionals to perform in-depth assessments of various components of your association, such as structural, electrical, and mechanical engineers. Again, a reserve specialist, generally speaking, is not an engineer. So there are com components in a building that may not be visible uh, or may not have uh, accessibility that is feasible for a reserve specialist. So uh, a reserve study is not a destructive inspection. So there may be some components that a reserve study really can't dive into without getting that third party professional involved. So that is really one of the major takeaways I want uh, people to understand is that 
Utilize your reserve study, set aside funds in your reserve study to engage third-party professionals to do more um, more uh, in-depth analysis of, of your various components. Uh, for example, like the, uh, the Florida collapse that just occurred, there was uh, an analysis done by an engineer back in 2008 that basically highlighted some facts that the association should have taken into account and they did discuss but those could have been implemented into a reserve study once that engineering report was, uh, was made available. So that being said, looking at a reserve study, um, a reserve study is basically built on a site visit or so, several site visits by your reserve specialist or, or whoever is performing your reserve study. And it's uh, built on information provided, by the, the, provided to the reserve specialist. Uh, here are some photos uh, that I just want to show uh, our viewers today. Uh, of some items that I may encounter uh, when I'm doing a reserve uh, uh, special, excuse me, a reserve study site visit. Uh, here's a here's a picture, obviously, uh, of this association that uh, they obviously had some issues uh, where they had to shore up that concrete beam and pillar by uh, adding that uh, reinforcement uh, along the top corner there. So when I'm performing a reserve study and I see something like this. I will put into the reserve study funds allocated to engage a structural engineer or a third party professional, uh, essentially to, to go and review something like this and maybe go and monitor something uh, like this to get a really better understanding of what we are looking at. Uh, when it comes to some of these analysis or these uh, engineering reports that you want to fund in a reserve study, it may not be a one time expenditure as well. It is something that you may want to put in on a frequent basis or a set schedule to make sure that you're monitoring uh, things that may have changed uh, from one period of time to the other period of time, because obviously th th there, are, uh, there are things that could occur after your site visit uh, or may occur a number of years later. So it would probably be uh, beneficial to have some of these items as a re reoccurring expense on a, on a set schedule. And that will really depend on the uh, details of your building and what that engineer may say. He, he may or she may say that you should perform uh, an update or basically an assessment on a set schedule just to monitor uh, what is going on with your building. Uh, the next picture is just another example here uh, that I want to show you. It may be hard to see on your screen a little bit, uh, but if you look closely at the center of that picture, uh, you can see that the CMU uh, blocks uh, are starting to separate a little bit. You can see daylight coming through, and there's a horizontal uh, jag of crack that follows the, uh, the, the mortar of that CMU block. So again, when I'm performing a site visit, I'll highlight this fact in a reserve study and advise that board or that association that they need to engage a third-party professional to really take a, a deeper dive uh, into this and give their professional opinion on how to best address this, uh, this matter. Uh, another uh, picture uh, that I wanna show you, that's the next picture, uh, is uh, some water intrusion. Uh, again, uh, this is just a simple uh, visual observation that I'm doing as a reserve specialist. I'm not giving a professional opinion on how to fix this. Uh, obviously I have some ideas, but again, the, the association has an obligation really to engage that third party to better understand. So obviously there's some water penetration issues here in this wall uh, that should really be remedied uh, as everyone is well aware. Uh, when water uh, comes in contact with concrete, that water will penetrate that concrete, work its way to that rebar. Uh, the rebar will rust and expand and essentially crack and cause uh, concrete breaks or concrete spalls uh, that need to be addressed. So again, when I perform a site visit and I see that there's some kind of water penetration entering the concrete like this in the basement garage, I'm gonna highlight that fact in a reserve study uh, to ensure that that association is engaging a, uh, engaging a proper third party professional to give a further analysis of what needs to be done to, rem to remedy that situation. Uh, the next picture uh, is a picture uh, or an example that I kind of gave earlier um, is the, the walkway railings. Um, this is a perfect example of something that I may encounter when I'm doing a site visit at an association. Um, obviously, if you, if you look at that, they have concerns of what's going on there. That was actually already placed there. But if you look at the top corner, there's some separation of that railing. 
And if you go to the next picture uh, that will appear on your screen real briefly, as you can see the bottom corner of that uh, railing post pocket, there's a spall. Uh, so essentially that, that uh, handrail is not structurally sound or secure uh, due to that breakage uh, in the concrete. Not only is that a, a safety concern for the handrail itself and putting weight on that, but if somebody were to walk underneath that and for heaven forbid that the piece of concrete actually fell and, and caused bodily damage to an individual that was walking below that. So I, I guess the reason uh, that uh, a more in-depth or a level one reserve study uh, with site visit is beneficial is because a reserve specialist, they will walk the property in its entirety all the way from the rooftop down to the basement garages, the different corridors, stairwells, things like that. And they are looking for items that obviously belong to the association, which are considered their common elements, but also they're identifying areas that either are a life safety issue or a component that has deteriorated quicker than originally anticipated. So you're basically getting a, a, a separate set of eyes on your association uh, up and above your, your board of directors. Uh, and your on-site management. It's always good to at least get a new set, a new set, fresh set of eyes on a building because uh, that individual may uh, be able to see uh, concerns or items that need to be addressed that have just, you know, basically come, you know, a, a normal eyesore for uh, an owner or a board member or a resident manager. Um, that being said, um, some other things to consider, uh, and it depends on your property, obviously. Some uh, one things that I see uh, at other properties is that, depending on your location, you may have a seawall or a retaining wall. Uh, obviously, when you're doing a site visit or we're doing an inspection of those, oftentimes you'll see a bulge uh, forming on the outer edge of those. In regards to a seawall, uh, a sinkhole might be forming on the inside of that seawall. Again, when I'm going to an association doing this site visit. I'm, I'm allocating funds to engage third parties to give a further analysis of that retaining wall or that seawall uh, to see what is going on there. For that, like that picture I showed you earlier, there's obviously a waterproofing uh, system that's compromised and the water's starting to seep through. Uh, so it's important to engage those third parties. Uh, that being said, uh, well, we're gonna take a short break here uh, and we'll be right back with you to continue our discussion about the reserve studies and how you can uh, utilize those uh, to minimize life safety events. America Finding Its Way is a 30-minute talk show from Think Tech Hawaii, which is streamed live at 11 o'clock every Thursday morning. The show features Jay Fidel as host with regular contributors Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair, Stephanie Dalton and Winston Welch. We discuss the issues, events, challenges and crises in Washington and around the country and the world, in the federal and state governments, in the cities and in the hinterland. We examine and evaluate the motivations and frustrations of the competing individuals and interests these days, we connect the dots, we tell the truth, and we try to figure out what it all means and where things are going. In short, we cover America finding its way in the post-Trump world, which is not easy and which is sometimes a discouraging experience. We try to be optimistic but we are often left pessimistic about the future of our country. Come watch us, listen to us, email your questions to us at questions at thinktechhawaii.com every Thursday morning and you'll see what we mean. Thanks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Condo Insider, brought to you by uh, Think Tank Hawaii. Again, I'm Jonathan Billings, Vice President of Touchstone Properties and uh, Owner President of Vertical Hawaii Reserve Studies. We have been talking about how associations can utilize a reserve study uh, to implement uh, funding in order to minimize uh, the chance of a building collapse or a life safety event uh, that may cause bodily harm to your residents or, or to visitors of your association. Uh, we've talked about uh, performing site visits, identifying areas that may be of concern, uh, where you should be uh, utilizing a third party professional, such as a mechanical engineer, or electrical engineer, or structural engineer. Again, a reserve study is not an engineering analysis. Uh, it is a financial planning tool. So you really need to engage those third party professionals to give a more in-depth analysis of those different components that may be of concern. 
That being said, uh, moving on, when it comes to performing a reserve study, obviously a site visit is an important aspect of that uh, reserve study process. However, uh, it is also important uh, that the association, the board of directors or on-site management, managing agent, they provide uh, as much information as possible to the individual performing the reserve study for your association. Uh, and what do I mean by as much information as possible? So if you have already conducted a third party assessment where you've already had a, third, uh, a structural engineer come out or an electrical engineer or mechanical engineer, oftentimes those reports will highlight items that need to be addressed. If you're able to provide that information to your reserve specialist or the individual performing the reserve study for your association, that reserve specialist can incorporate that information into the reserve study. Uh, it'll help in order to uh, prioritization uh, of different projects uh, in regards to what is a higher priority uh, versus something that may be a, a lower, lower priority and how do you on that point. So if you have third party uh, condition assessments or third party uh, engineering reports, I would suggest that uh, the association provide that information to the reserve specialist so they can incorporate that information into the reserve study. Another uh, item that the association may want to provide to the reserve uh, specialist or individual performing the reserve study is inspection reports, for example, may be performed by the Honolulu Fire Department. Um, those uh, inspection reports will obviously identify deficiencies uh, that need to be corrected. And, and again, a reserve study can uh, obviously highlight that as a priority and put that uh, as a replacement component uh, in the near future rather than pushing that out into the, into the, the further out in the future. So in an inspection report, an elevator inspection report that may have some components that are, uh, are the responsibility of the association. So any kind of inspection report that is provided by a third party professional, or a governmental agency, uh, such as the Honolulu Fire Department uh, or an elevator state inspection. Uh, another uh, report that obviously many high rises have been mandated to uh, perform or to complete over the last uh, few years has been a life safety evaluation in light of the loss at Marco Polo. Uh, City Council enacted uh, an ordinance that essentially mandates some association that uh, don't already have sprinklers installed in their building to perform a life safety evaluation. And this life safety evaluation will identify areas that need to be addressed. For example, your fire systems that are very costly, uh, possible uh, door closures or a uh, standpipe installation. Um, that report uh, identifies or provides useful information that should be incorporated into a reserve study, especially considering that there is a deadline to meet these uh, upgrades uh, according to that ordinance that the city council has enacted. So that is another report that should be provided to your reserve specialist or individual who is performing your reserve study because that information uh, can help prioritize. So once we've done our site visit, uh, once we've uh, reviewed the documents provided uh, to, the, by, to the reserve specialist by the association, again, we can go and prioritize which projects uh, have a higher urgency and which ones may be able to push out a little bit depending on your funding levels. Oftentimes items uh, that are a risk to an association should be addressed immediately. Uh, a reserve study can help you understand uh, whether or not uh, a special assessment is required uh, or a loan is required. Depending on the size uh, of these repairs, uh, a special assessment or oftentimes a loan may be required. For example, when you're doing your, uh, your fire system modernizations, that kind of uh, has been a very costly uh, component for associations. And now that they have a deadline to meet, uh, they may have been planning to replace or modernize their fire systems 10 years from now. But with this new deadline that's in place, they have a shorter time frame, so they may not have adequate funding right now in order to modernize that fire system. So uh, and a, a reserve study can help prioritize uh, which components are more urgent and which components are less urgent that may be more aesthetic uh, that can be pushed off for a little bit in order to spread out cash flow. Uh, and then it will help identify whether or not a special assessment or loan is required in the immediate future uh, or uh, depending on what the project is or depending on the results of those condition assessments that your, your third party professionals are performing, you might be able to adjust your reserves, reserve contribution accordingly 
implementing increases to meet your future obligations. Uh, that being said, uh, again, a reserve study is a living document. Uh, it is updated on an annual basis by your association. Uh, the level one reserve study that we've discussed today uh, is the most comprehensive reserve study according to a Community Associations Institute. A uh, level one reserve study basically includes a site visit where that reserve specialist is visiting your property. Uh, they, again, they are walking the property from rooftop to basement. Uh, they're quantifying the different components of your association. They're documenting the different components of your association, what kind of condition uh, via photograph, what uh, condition those uh, components are in and whether or not it may be a, a priority or not. Uh, from there, uh, we input that information and hopefully your association will provide uh, additional information that you've already uh, conducted by third party uh, uh, professionals uh, to incorporate into that reserve study. Um, from there, uh, you basically will create a funding plan and a prior prioritization plan with the board of directors. So make sure that when you're conducting your level of reserve study that you meet, meet with your reserve specialist and go over the different components, discuss them in depth, you know, discuss when those components should be completed. Um, keeping in mind, a reserve study is not, a, is not meant to be utilized to basically minimize increases. Uh, so, unfortunately, what we uh, have kind of seen, I've seen quite often, is that associations will, will receive these third-party reports, and it gets put into a filing cabinet, uh, and nothing is done with it, because uh, just due to the fact that the reports may uh, recommend increasing maintenance fees or, or, or will require an increase in maintenance fees due to uh, the findings of that condition assessment or that third-party analysis. Uh, so I would highly suggest when you receive those reports, obviously just don't brush them off and put them in a filing cabinet and don't think of them again. Implement that information into your reserve study in order to make sure you're funding accordingly to uh, exercise or um, incorporate uh, those repairs into your reserve study and fund accordingly. Um, that being said, uh, I appreciate your time today. Again, uh, a reserve study is a, is a wonderful tool that should be utilized and spend some time on your reserve study. Uh, too often I see associations spend hours and hours and hours on an operating budget uh, that may total maybe a million dollars or $3 million for that fiscal year. Your reserve study, however, has oftentimes one single project that may cost a million or $3 million or $10 million. So spend some time on your reserve study uh, have a clear understanding of a reserve study. It is a communication tool uh, for you board members to utilize to your ownership when you are recommending a loan assessment or special assessment or large increase in maintenance fees. It is a, it is a communication tool that can clearly show the reason or the justification behind these increases in maintenance fees. That being said, thank you for your time today. I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, Aloha.